Holy shit. I can't. It fucking is insane. They did it. <laughs> they landed it on the Vaj. I don't, I don't want to see the second stage. Show me the first stage. Oh, oh here we oh, go. Oh, oh. Where is it? There's the ship. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh my god. Come on. Oh! Oh! oh. Is it going to do it? it? It's not. Oh, it <laughs> fucking smashed it. It's fucking. <laughs> it's down. That is down. Yes. They've done it. Oh, Made my it look God. so easy. Fuck, look at. Oh, I that can't is... believe we're looking at that. That's insane. That is it. so bad. It was amazing. It was so cool. And they actually feel we were able to watch it live for once. Yeah. Yeah. Like the last, what, the last two, three barge landings, whatever, however many there have been, where you just have that camera yeah. on the barge. Which and dies. It's like kind of shaky, shaky. And then you see the rocket, like, see, like, the glow from the engines coming down <laughs> and then just cuts out. It's yeah. Like, oh. But this time, they full, the... like, full just camera angle just filming the entire thing yeah, from seem- quite high as well coming down yeah seemingly shot from a helicopter it looked like yeah yeah you could see one of the sort of landing struts yeah as, as it, it was, came as closer it was banking round, yeah, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when are they going to reuse this thing then Cause, so they're obviously going to transport it back now yeah they've got a bit of a journey back I think what, it takes for- two days to get back to port from where they are because it's just it? really yeah it's really slow they have it to looks, drag, they have yeah. to tow it. it that thing doesn't doesn't really no. it's got enough power to kind of just like hold position right and like compensate a little bit for like swell and stuff but right. um it takes like two days to drag it back to florida oh geez yeah so are they gonna are they gonna like do they have to like get on board now and presumably i think they ha- yeah, yeah yeah i think they have to like tie it down and and i think there originally there was some problem with like years ago some talk about like salt water being bad so I probably have to like cover up the engines and that kind of stuff oh yeah I'd yeah imagine. for two days there's going to be yeah. loads of spray yeah, yeah 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 so they'll probably get be doing all that like now I'd yeah. imagine that's going to um, be pretty sketchy with the first people on there I'd imagine they'd be like oh because the things I mean it's fairly stable but it's sort of wavy and a bit wobbly yeah like a big swell comes through and it's like whoa yeah <laughs> just be ready to dive into the sea out of the way and we, we I read that the uh, the they once they drain the fuel though it's going to be very bottom heavy the center of mass is, is cut down yeah yeah lot. yeah that makes sense i guess yeah but so it's, it's gonna be more stable than it was yeah. but it's gonna be pretty scary i imagine big. getting on That's there the thing. it's, it's like a building it's, it's a, like a building exactly the like you don't really get a sense of scale unless it's next to something no but no. like the, the the landing legs it's a beast like the the spread of the landing legs is like it's like 50 feet or yeah. something like that yeah yeah, it's, yeah. it's a big it's, it's a big, big lad it's a big thing <laughs> but yeah so now that they've done this mm what does this mean like what does it mean that they can do they couldn't before well isn't it something like two thirds of their launches are going to require a barge landing because they can't get back to land anyway yeah I think it's something like that yeah okay yeah yeah Uh, it's more than half a significant amount of them are going to require barge landings so uh, presumably they've now done it once and they're going to be able to iterate on this they've you know they've had one success they've had lots of failures yeah up to this point so it's just a landmark moment of showing that they can do it on the barge and presumably they're just going to get better and better at it. so it means hopefully you know cheaper space travel for everyone <laughs> i mean that's obviously the ultimate and, goal um, and of course they're going to be able to now they've got a rocket that they're going to reuse presumably because the other one yeah they wanted to keep right the one they landed ages ago yeah the one back in december that landed back at cape, yeah. Cana- cape canaveral mm-hmm. was going to be i think elon said he was going to they were going to just like keep it Obviously, do obviously study it and learn loads from it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But basically, just keep it as like a token of like they static the first fired one. it, didn't they? But there was something jammed in one of the engines. There was something weird going on. Yeah, there was just like one thrust of them, fluctuations going on in an yeah. engine that, that someone reckoned there was some debris caught in it or something. Yeah. But, so again, they'll, they'll do all those types of tests on it. Yeah. And they'll see how it fares in the salt, in the salty water, yeah. in the air and stuff, and all these kind of bits and bobs. But they've, the drone they've, ships. they've got they've got customers already saying that they want to fly on. Yeah on reused boosters. yeah who's, who's someone who's some, well SES who's, oh is it SES who I think were the previous launch before this like the yeah. SES 9 satellite have already come out and said like we want to be the first we're quite happy to take that hit and be yeah. the first company if you give us a cheap deal mm. you know knock off bargain rocket yeah um, so I mean this this could be it this could this booster that landed today yeah. could be if it's okay yeah. and, and flyable could be the first 
properly reused reused orbital yeah. booster ever. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah. Of course, um, in the last few months, Blue Origin have landed uh, their Good booster point. and reused it twice now. Um, yeah, it's done three launches and obviously it's not time. an orbital flight, but uh, it's still you know. Awesome. Yeah, it's still it's um, really cool. So yeah, these reusable rockets. They're the new it's, thing. It's the future, definitely the future. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, and um, the the yeah the, so the barge landings are yeah as you said absolutely crucial for like a huge amount of their upcoming launch of their future launches. Yes, over half of them, and that, and future rockets like the Falcon Heavy and stuff mm. are going to we're going to need it. Yeah, that's going to well. be going a lot faster. Exactly. Yeah, um, and it presumably because the Falcon Heavy's got like three boosters, right? Yes. So the two there's going to be two that peel off slightly earlier than the one that then yeah. separates out. Yeah. So that middle one's going to be going a lot faster. Yeah. Than the other two. Those other two, I think potentially. Well, it depends. I get it depends on the mission. Yeah. It depends, you know, on the, how much fuel they have. But you could probably land two of them maybe at the launch site and then possibly catch yeah. the other one with a barge. Man, getting three. Lo- imagine three <laughs> landings. <laughs> yeah. From one launch. Awesome. Fuck. <laughs> That's just Which rocket porn. Yeah, it's, it's rocket porn is what it is. <laughs> What's the what are the long term plans for these these barge landings? Do you reckon they're going to build like a like a a bigger landing platform, like a more substantial landing platform? There was talk at one point about I don't know if this is still in the plans, but there was talk at one point about these things refueling at sea. The oh. boosters landing on a barge, just completely autonomously, obviously, like they already do, with no support teams, refueling at sea and then flying yeah, back yeah. to the launch site. Yeah. And then, like you know, two hours later, another one coming. You'd have to build like a bigger, you know, like a more substantial type of barge, wouldn't you? With all t- sorts of other infrastructure on it. Um, yeah, potentially. And like and, a sort of floating launch pad. But basically. presumably, in the, with the, this kind of technology, you, I mean, that's the end goal, right? You, you have yeah. stuff land, refuel, take itself back to the to wherever it needs to go, like Thunderbird One, yeah. and then you just you know do some maintenance and chuck it up again, and you just have like a cycle of them. Just yeah. Psh- going around and like there'll be people overseeing it maybe and you just have like a you imagine in like some kind of mission control somewhere yeah or like launch control you just have like some like readout of where all the different boosters are and there's maybe some like ascending and some on their way to Mars or like whatever and then there's like obviously the first stages are landing and being refueled and flying yeah. back to the launch site this is a whole stream of these things yeah, yeah. going just completely automated and the thing they delivered this time to the space station was really interesting yeah good point I was um I was reading a bit about what's called the Big Low uh, Beam yeah. the Big Low Airspace mm. Beam uh, which is basically like an expandable habitat um like inflatable right yeah essentially kind of yeah 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 um and it goes at packed all, like packed all together they stick it up on the space station the cannon arm moves it to a certain other part of the space station then it auto like inflates and uh, like sets an itself bed. up yeah it kind Welcome. of it's it's like made of um, like Kevlar and some other materials and stuff um, and I it kind of in a way it's almost like a like a big sort of space suit as a space station as, right. as, 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 as like a habitat module yeah sort of I can kind of see that because they're made of Kevlar yeah yeah sure sure I think sure. it's made of Vel Vel velcro or something like that some other thing as well that helps yeah. with a uh, deal with bits of radiation and stuff but the the they're really strong these things yeah they did some micrometeor impact tests on the ground micrometeorite impact tests. just like firing stuff yeah just at blasting it. like ball bearings at it presumably and uh i don't think i think they said that they perform much better than just the aluminium or whatever yeah i'm sure they do that actually a lot of them there's like an elasticity to it i'd imagine yeah 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 it's like a bulletproof vest basically like multiple layers of kevlar um and essentially they didn't go simulated micrometeor micro i keep messing that up micro (laughs) micro micrometeorite impacts um didn't actually go through that's amazing so that's like one of the one of that's a big threat to like a a space station like the ISS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they might have, say, 24 hours to repair it in between um, the, the impact and then, you know, being able to get people out and repair it. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah, a yeah. much longer time to sort of deal with it yeah. rather than just the instant old crap. And also, you don't get all the debris coming off as well. Yeah. Because you get loads of debris come off if you've got like a tin can. Yeah, sure. Like so, it just breaks into pieces. Yeah. Yeah. There's something really cool about the idea of like being able to pack. Yeah. like essentially like a livable module that's yeah. big and has a, not, a nice amount of space into like a small area and like maybe take a, quite a lot of them in like one of these yeah, dragon so capsules or something yeah, yeah. or something like that size take enough to like 
build a kind of mini space station you get a lot more volume basically if you're up mass yeah with exactly that, with that yeah. design yeah um, and and potentially it seems to be stronger although so they're going to just be like testing the pressure and monitoring radiation levels and these types of things it's a bit mad that it hasn't already been done to be honest is it just like the materials technology hasn't been up to scratch i or think something? so um I, there was plans for it for a, from a long time ago but they haven't implemented them obviously yet no one had um, it, yeah, you're right. It does seem kind of like an obvious thing, but mm. obviously there were there were hurdles. Could be really good for you know like long duration space flight as well. Like yeah, where you just you just give yourself a whole bunch more space, and that's obviously going to be like great for psychology and stuff for mm. a crew that are trapped inside a tin can for six months or whatever or longer. Yeah, having just more space is just always going to be good. I don't. I was just thinking about like how it like what's it going to be like being in it? It's just kind of like a big inflatable kind of mm. soft edged kind of I've it's seen, just sort of living in a balloon it's a bit well they already say that living on the ISS is a bit like camping and surely this yeah. is just going to be like another step in that direction you're just yeah. camping in space I, um, I, I don't know if you can put windows in it hmm I don't know because that would be a bit of a bummer you just use VR yeah but it's not the same yeah, you I, mean, see, you wanna, I mean it's cool but you want to see actual space yeah and the earth and all that kind of stuff and Mars or whatever presumably if you're ever going to make hotels or whatever things out of these in orbit then you want to have good views you, you kit them up though, Pre- presumably that they can just add the, modules onto them and whatnot yeah I, I've seen I've seen um, I think yeah, if you've on like, the Bigelow website or something they, yeah. I've seen like cutaways of like diagrams of these things or it might not have even been the Bigelow it might have just been some like random person's like render of it mm-hmm. like cutaways of inflatable modules but inside they've been like kitted out with like rooms and floor and like you know different areas and like places to go and chill out and <laughs> that kind of thing yeah. you know not obviously it's like, all zero gravity a but. bit like those um arctic stations you know the big kind of round yeah. ones they kind of yeah, got yeah, certain yeah, yeah. areas like they that. sort of reminded me of those a little bit when I yeah so i don't think it i think you know if it's like going to be lived in properly for a while it will be mm. it won't just be like a big empty ball <laughs> no no, that's true. But yeah, I know what you mean. Be a bit weird. It'd be interesting to see how they design the interiors of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Overall, a good day for space. Good day for space. Making history again, SpaceX within yeah. like three months, yeah. essentially. You know, They're doing all right. They're doing all right. Yeah, doing well. It's a really exciting time. Yeah. Yeah. Really exciting time.